Welcome to Regulated Power Supplies Part 11. All right, so in our previous video, we solved for R1 value. We got basically we got the voltage for U1 on pin 7, the V plus voltage, nice and rock solid stable at 30 volts. Um, now we need to look at the probably the, this is the final video for this fixed current regulating and then we're going to go into variable current rate uh, current regulating and what we need to do next is determine the R5 value we also need to look and solve for the power for Q3 all right so when we're designing the current the fixed current uh, regulation for this circuit we want to make sure that we can at least get to whatever our desired max current was. So up until now, we've, defi we've defined our I max as 0.5 amps. And the assumption was is that this circuit would run at that current all day long. So we don't want to limit at 0.5 amps. We want to provide a little bit of padding or cushion right there. Um, for our regulation circuit so that we can run where we want to run. And so you can see I've labeled this as the I shorted output. So if someone comes up and just ties that output straight to ground, shorts our output, um, we want a, that current to be limited or regulated by our fixed limiting circuit. And so what I'm doing is we're going to take our I max, the current that we want to be able to run out, and we're going to add a little bit of padding or cushion to that. And so I just added a 0.1 amp. You could add 0.05, whatever, or maybe you could you want to design it to be maxed at 0.5. For this example, we're going to define the output shorted current as 0.6 amps. All right, so now that we've got a shorted output current that we want to uh, limit at we need to take a look and kind of decide how, how does this circuit work so we can see we've got d1 d2 and d3 what you need to realize is normally there's no current flowing through those diodes they're normally reverse biased they're not on there's not enough voltage to bias them on um, so that would be what your just your normal operation anything that's going to be uh, below our 0 0.6 amps. We want that branch of diodes to be off. Okay, so when somebody comes along and starts trying to uh, pull more current than our 0 0.6 amps, what's going to happen is the voltage across R5, VR5, starts to go up. And if you can see there, you've got three diodes in series, so that's 2.1 volts. You've got a VBE of Q2, you've got a VBE of Q1. And so you can see that as that voltage VR5 starts to rise, and once it hits 0 0.7 volts, you've got enough voltage there to bias D1, D2, and D3 on. So they'll actually forward bias at that point and turn on, and they'll hold VR5 at that 0.7 volts and that's what's providing our fixed current limiting. So now that we kind of understand how the circuit is working, the uh, current limiting circuit is working, we can go ahead and we know that VR5 is going to be equal to 0.7 volts when the limiting kicks on and then it'll be held at that voltage uh, by the uh, diode branch. So once we've got that voltage, now we pick our, our I shorted output where we want to limit at, and we divide that voltage by that current, and that gives us a resistance R5 of 1.1667 ohms. Now you can, you can round that up slightly. Um, what that's going to do is bring your, your current down a little bit. You could round it down slightly and that would just bring your current up a little bit. For this example we're going to round down to 1.2 ohms. Okay so we've got our, our new R5 uh, set to a standard value of 1.2 ohms. Let's go ahead and figure out what our new um, 
circuit current regulation, fixed current regulation uh, value of current is going to be. So if we divide our VR5 by our R5 actual, we're going to do 0 0.7 volts divided by 1.2 ohms. We can see that this, this uh, circuit will now limit at 0 0.583 amps. We need to also calculate the power for PR5. So if we do just do I squared times R, we know that we've got 0 0.583 amps squared times the 1.2 ohms. We end up with a 407.867 milliwatts. So that's basically a half watt. And in order to like build this and run this, we probably want to run run that at a full one watt resistor. So I've looked that up in Mauser and we're going to have the parts at the end, but we've got a 1.2 ohm resistor at rated at one watt for R5. All right, so now we need to take a look at PQ3, the power of Q3, the transistor that we're using to help regulate the V plus 30 volts for the op amp. And power for that transistor is going to be ICQ3 times VCEQ3. Now we know that we designed this op amp to run at a max of 30 milliamps, even though it's, it's probably never going to get to that value. Uh, let's go ahead and use that to calculate our power calcs. So it's an IE, but it's basically the same as the IC. So we're looking at a 30 milliamps times a VCE of Q3. So we're going to subtract our VC max from our, uh, or sorry, our V plus, our 30 volts on the plus pin of U1 from our VC max. That's going to give us a VCE of 11.03 volts. Multiply that by the 30 milliamps and we get a power of Q3 at 330.98 milliwatts. Now the standard 58 uh, 5088 can handle that much power all day long and really we're um, we're not going to even probably come close to that actual power because we've added a little bit of padding into our calculation anyways but if we wanted to add and take strip off some of that power um, an easy way to do it is to add an R2 in the collector there and if we want to cut the power exactly in half, like take half of the power away from the transistor and put that on R2, we know that we should end up with basically the 330 or 331 divided by 2 power on each, the transistor and the, R, the new R2. And so the easy way to do that is just divide the VCE by 2 and then give that voltage to R2. So if we divide the 11.033 volts by 2, we get 5.517 volts remaining, which will be on both the VCE and the R2, VR2. And remember, we said that we wanted to always make sure we have a minimum of 2 volts for that VCE. So with 5.517 volts for that VCE, we're still, it's, we're still great. So now that we know the voltage uh, that we want, to peel off and put on R2, uh, we can divide that by IR2. Voltage divided by current gives me my resistance, and we're going to use that same max current uh, for the op amp, the 30 milliamps, and that's going to give us a resistor of 183.883 ohms. And we can round that down to the next standard value. We ran that down to R2, and that gives us um, a, a pro, a 180 ohm resistor for our standard value. Now we can find the power for that R2 and it's I squared times R, 30 milliamps squared times 180 and we get a power PR2 of 165.495 milliwatts and we would expect now that we could go back and check the power PQ2 it's going to be very very close to that same number. We're going to split the power there. And now we've got a scenario where the transistor, we just cut the power in half. So it's, it's just running cooler. 
and we can put a half watt resistor in there for R2 and it'll be good all day long. Even a quarter watt would probably be fine in that position. All right, so here is our final circuit for variable voltage op amp regulation with fixed current limiting. And here's the parts lists are included if you wanted to look those up in Mauser.